Welcome to the Right Time Podcast. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. You can send us a tweet at the one hundred flowers dot com Twitter feed. That is at Bomani underscore Jones. Uh, so, fellas, you guys don't have the, the, the clip loaded up of me saying repeatedly that the Celtics were going to lose game four because I know damn well when the Cavs were down by double digits in the first half, y'all was sitting around getting ready to hit me with that, weren't y'all? Weren't y'all? Y'all couldn't wait to hit me with that because I was unequivocal about this. The Celtics are going to lose game four. I know Stephen Jung well enough to know that was prepared. That was coming. But, huh, that's funny. Nobody's sending that my way. I wonder what that's all about. Nobody is bringing that to me at all. Why? Because the Cavs hit like midpoint of the second quarter on, and they were just like, yeah, we on fire and nothing is going to stop this. LeBron James picked up his fourth foul in the second quarter. I honestly didn't even realize that the chance had come for him to rack up that many fouls. I went to dinner with the homie Pablo last night, and I got the, the TV screen over his shoulder. So I'm looking, and I saw when LeBron duck his shoulder on uh, the Rosier dude, and he fell, and they called the foul. And then they said he had four fouls, and I figured that had to be some variety of, te- of, of typographical error. There's no way he had. First of all, LeBron just generally doesn't get in foul trouble. You don't have a lot of games you can point to like, oh, that's LeBron with two early. No, 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 no. There wasn't no way in the world. I thought that was what it was. Next thing I knew, he was di- like out of there. And it's like, all right, so what are the Cavs going to do? And Kyrie is like, oh, I know what the Cavs are going to do. They're going to give the ball to me. And I'm going to make a lot of shots. After LeBron got the fourth foul, Kyrie was 14 for 18 from the floor. There was no one anywhere who could guard him. 14 for 18 from the floor. And by the way, a lot of that happened after LeBron then came back. And I mean, LeBron had 34 points in 37 minutes. Right. 34 points. In 37 minutes. And now here's LeBron James talking about what Kyrie showed y'all while LeBron was on the bench. Same thing I've been saying since I got here. Been saying he's a special kid, special talent. As the stakes get higher and higher, his game gets higher and higher. But it was nothing surprising for me. But he rose to the occasion and he put the team on on his back. And uh, we definitely needed that effort from him. You know, like you said, he's just been kind of dictating the game and being a playmaker and things of that nature throughout the playoffs or even throughout this series so far. But tonight, you know, he showed why he's one of the best point guards in the league. And um, he commanded us, you know, to be better, especially in the second half. LeBron was like, how do I love thee? Let me count the cliches. And there's not a single unique insight there about Kyrie. But the fact is, look, Kyrie can get buckets. If he's not getting buckets, I don't know how useful he is. But he gets buckets, and he's a dude that you can look to and just roll the ball and say, all right, look, man, somebody got to get us some buckets right now. And Kyrie's like, been waiting on you to sell me that all day. Right? Like a big part of why this Kyrie thing works is that when you play with LeBron, you can just be over there and get buckets. Like let LeBron do all this heavy lifting and running the offense. Kyrie's like, only reason y'all asking me to pass the ball to anybody else is because I'm not that tall. Right? And Kyrie's like, if I was six foot five, not once would anybody expect me to pass the ball to anybody else. But since I'm what, about six two, now y'all looking at me like, okay, who you gonna get involved? Why would I get anybody else involved when I got myself? I'm sorry. I simply don't understand. So he went out there and lit him up. Absolutely lit him up. And uh, here's Kyrie talking about his performance. We knew going into halftime that we hadn't played our best basketball, so a conscious choice that we had to make on our end. You know, how bad do we want it? You know, we just had to keep it within striking distance. And we knew that our pressure, if we picked it up, we're going to have them commit turnovers and make them feel uncomfortable. And that's when we're at our best, uh, when our defensive intensity is at an all-time high. You know, we're playing with unbelievable pace. It was one of those games that, you know, we had to fight through and we we had to earn it. Did that really count as an all-time high defensive intensity, though, Shannon? Am I a little off? Because, I mean, I was, like, on the third quarter, I had to listen on the radio. For Kyrie Irving, that would count <laughs> as an all-time high defensive. Right. The all-time high for defensive intensity. Like, if someone were to ask you, Shannon, the most def- intense defense you've ever seen anybody play on a basketball court, do you have an example? Because I got two. Let me think about it. What are your two? All right. Uh, number two, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen at the 1992 Olympics on Tony Kukoc. That's number two. And number one, 
I am sure that number one was a game that you were watching, Shannon. It wasn't even that long ago. I believe that number one was in the year 2012. It happened right down the road at the Americans Airlines Arena. And that's the day that Jeremy Lin came to town. And I have never seen anything like that before. Jeremy Lin ain't do nothing to them boys, but them boys still shot him. Like, they, they, they had just made a decision. We're going to end the Lin Sanity thing right now. Right now. The Lynn Sanity ended in one night like Seneca Wallace's Heisman campaign that year where they went and played against Oklahoma. It was a wrap. There was nothing there. Nothing that was going on. But, all right, let me give this to the Celtics also. The Celtics went out there and put together basically two consecutive halves of really good basketball. But they just don't have the dudes, right? Like they, they simply don't have the players. But they were out there killing them in the first quarter. In part, because even though LeBron, by the time they came back around, looked, you know, the numbers look good. Did you think he looked good? Like, I still felt like I felt like the results were better this go round, and certainly he took more shots, but he still didn't look good. Like, he still didn't seem like he was in it in a way that you would expect for LeBron James to be there. And again, four fouls in the first half for LeBron is crazy. Four fouls in the first half, generally speaking, for anybody is kind of wild. But part of why Lou could leave LeBron out there with three fouls is LeBron generally doesn't commit fouls. He just didn't seem to be out there with it like that. Did you see that Richard Jefferson said that the real deal is LeBron was sick and LeBron didn't want to tell anybody because LeBron didn't want to make no excuses? Do you think that's true? He was referencing what, game three? Yeah. And LeBron struggles. It's convenient now. Right. It, it would have been he, something if he would have mentioned that post-game. But he can't quite say that. Like, what, 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 Richard Jefferson is allowed to come out here and tell, well, you know, LeBron's sick. Nah. Here's the one thing I will say, though. We do have a great expectation of professional athletes to be out here playing when they're sick. That absolutely does not apply to those of us who work at desks. Hey, can you imagine playing an NBA basketball game with the flu or with a cold? Or how about just with a headache? Can you imagine that? Just before this radio show, man, I had to go take me a nap in the middle of the day. My head was booming. Booming. I ain't about to be out here playing no ball with no headache. Booming. Really quickly, on the Celtics, though, they blew their chance, didn't they? Chance to do what? They blew their chance. Chance to do what? Not to win the series per se. Then what was the chance to do what? To make it interesting, like yeah, we had to, we had the the game they, the game three, they, but if we, if we had a series that was two two going back to Boston, now that's something. They blew their opportunity to get another free trip to Cleveland. Is that really blowing an opportunity? Did they really blow it? Like, oh, damn, we don't get to go back to Cleveland again. You know what I'm saying? Like, is that really an opportunity that they blew? I mean, they had a chance to win the game. Like, here's Brad Stevens talking about where they went wrong. They still have two all-stars on the floor, you know. With 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 the best player in the world, they, they go to Unreal, but they're still a pretty darn good team, you know, when those guys are out there. And, and uh, Irving again, end of the second, end of the third. Did some incredible things uh, with the ball, and you know we had really good athletes, quick guys that that make things tough on people, um, guarding him, and he was able to raise up and make a lot of tough shots. Uh, he was able to get bias and make tough shots in the paint. Again, sometimes I think that I'll go look at it, see what all the things that we did wrong, but you know, I think it's more of a tip your hat kind of thing with those two guys tonight. Yeah, like I don't feel like like what was there for Boston to do differently, right? Um, Stevens is basically saying they did not capitalize when LeBron was on the bench. And, yes, you would like to capitalize when LeBron was on the bench. But they did what most of us would think would be even harder, which is capitalize when LeBron is on the floor. Right? Like, when he was on the floor, they capitalized. When he was on the floor, they built the big league. Like, look, they just lost. You know, like, there's nobody really to blame or anything like that. Cleveland just rolled out this game and said, hey, man, we have the three best players in this series. Is that fair to say? Hell, might they even have the four? Who's the best player to Boston got right now without, without Isaiah Thomas being out? Right, you don't have an answer, do you? Is it Avery Bradley? I was going to go Avery Bradley. Right, but we don't have an answer. Like, that's my point. The Cavs had three best players in the series. And who won this game? Three dudes. Nobody else is in double figures, as I recall. Just those three dudes. Kevin Love, 17, 17, and 5. LeBron had the 34. Kyrie hit him for a 40 ounce. That's what this was. Like, the reason the Cavs are intriguing. Their top three are so good relative to everybody else's. And that's what this came down to. It's like, okay, cool. Y'all out here with these low spades, we got three books. We count right now. Just looking at the hand, we count these three books right now. How many books you got? Because we got three. And those three 
was enough to make sure that they got their bid. Yeah. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. Coming up next, it's a very long story, but blame Peter Rosenberg. Somehow I'm going to have to argue with you about whether or not Scottie Pippen is better than Kyrie Irving on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. So uh, we were talking last segment about the Cavs and the Celtics and just the general way that the Cavs did this with their three books. Somebody said that the Warriors got four books, like four books that they can count, and that's not really how the books work. You understand what I'm saying? Like that's not how it works. Can't everybody be counting four books? There, there ain't but so many gimme books that you've got out here. The Cavs just happen to have three that you know that you can count. Like I feel like LeBron, big joker. I feel like Kyrie, Probably an ace of clubs where you only got two other clubs in your hand. You can count that one. And then Kevin Love, I feel like, is kind of the king of diamonds, right? You think you can count it, but you're not sure. But when you're playing against the Celtics, he's looking at that hand like, only club I got is aces. Only king I got is the club. So even, so even if I don't win with this king, I'm going to get another one on the cup book. So everything's okay. Like, you can count those three. Now, the Warriors, in terms of books that you can count, I feel like Kevin Durant, that's what that's, that's, I give you to LeBron, the big joker, right? Kevin Durant, kind of little jokerish. Like, I feel like he's in the little joker place. Steph Curry, deuce of diamonds. If you play with deuces, red over black, I feel like he's there. Klay Thompson, however, yeah, I don't think that's a book you can count. I, don't, I think that's a book you can manufacture, not so much a book that you can count. Yeah, that, that would be a king. Yeah, and yeah, a king. You met the king when he's shooting. Right, right, a king. But you got other ones. You got to hope everything plays out. You got to hope nobody's cutting with him. Now, Draymond Green. Draymond Green is the most interesting one. You know what Draymond Green is? Draymond Green make you wish that it was Uno because he the wild. You put that down there. The color is green. He allows you to turn the color into everything else. Now, anyway, I had a little bizarre thing happen today. I saw it on the internet. Blame Peter Rosenberg. Peter Rosenberg doesn't work for us here. He's at, what, High 97 up there in New York City. And uh, Peter Rosenberg got on the Twitters, and he said, I think LeBron is likely the best ever, but let's be clear, LeBron never had anyone close to a Kyrie. Sorry, Scotty. And he had the internet going nuts at that point. And I observed, as soon as I saw it, just a general thought about basketball discussions. Because, look, we like talking about basketball. Right? When we're talking about basketball, people think that these comparisons are folly and nobody gets to the answer, and that's the point. They're fun because nobody actually gets to an answer. Scottie Pippen generates some of the most polarizing discussion among basketball fans that you will ever find. Because I don't know what properly rating Scottie Pippen is, Okay. But I find people either fluctuate between he's not even like a top 75 to 100 NBA player to Scottie Pippen is one of the 20 best players of all time. I had somebody today tell me Scottie Pippen in the last three championship runs with the Bulls was a better player than Michael Jordan. I had somebody tell me that. Had somebody hit me with this thing about Scottie Pippen, like Scottie Pippen's so good because if the number one went down, Scottie could be your number one option. I'm like, when the hell did you ever see that? Because that would require you to acknowledge that Michael Jordan ever once in his life did not show up to a game, and none of you have ever done it. But what are the Bulls? Even that year when Jordan was gone, uh, what they say he was doing, playing baseball. So even that year that Jordan was gone, where Scotty had the MVP season, everybody talking about Scotty should have won the MVP. No, the MVP was Akeem Olajuwon that was done properly. Scotty averaged 22 points a game. That's not a knock on Scotty. That's just saying that you couldn't just give the ball to Scotty and be like, hey, man, go out here and make this happen. Did anybody ever fear the idea of guarding Scotty Pippen? They just did not. Now, the thing about Scotty, though, of course, was Scotty was such a mean defender, right? Perimeter defender, as good as anybody that I can think of off the top of my head. I don't go so far as to say, like, the all time great perimeter defender because I can't just give them all to you right now. But no, no, no. Scotty was a mean defensive player and the scariest defense I think I have ever seen in my life. Shady, remember the Bulls used to run that 2 2 run, three quarter court trap with Jordan and Pippen on the second row and Rodman in the back? How, how, what were you supposed to do when he did that? <laughs> right. How are you supposed to get the ball across the half court? I don't understand why they didn't do that. Every single possession. Jordan and Pippen basically could stand on the court, stretch their arms out from side to side, and go from sideline to sideline without any space. That's some of the flexibility that Pippen gave you, though, because usually every team will have the one guy that will say, we'll have him guard the other team's best offensive player. Chicago had two of those guys. 
Like, which one of y'all want to take the other team's best defensive player tonight? Except the other thing was, though, Scotty was a better defensive player than Jordan, right? I mean, I don't think there's – Jordan, as good a defensive player as Jordan was, Jordan was really good on weak side and passing lanes and stuff like that. But, like, okay, I need somebody to put the clamps on this one dude right here. Scotty was there. Remember the 91 finals where Jordan got his run at Magic Johnson and then they put Scotty on Magic and it was a wrap. It was rapidy rap, rap. But then the discussion went a little further today. I had people out here trying to tell me that Scotty Pippen was a better player than Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. Shout out, I had people telling me that Dwayne Wade didn't play defense and that Scotty Pippen was almost as good an offensive player as Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. I don't agree with that. Yeah, Wade is what top. Top four, top three, two guard yes. of all time? Yes, yes. Like an elite defender at two guard and also just an offensive. The problem with Dwayne Wade is people discount the 2006 finals. <laughs> oh, another foul, right? And then the real problem of Dwayne Wade was when nobody was watching. Like that two th- from 2008 to 2010, that's where you got the real Dwayne Wade and nobody was watching. And by the time they got back to championships in 2012, his body started falling apart. How much do people discount Wade because he never won an MVP? That's a good question. I imagine that has something to do with it, right? Is that he, there was never that one time where you pointed and said Dwayne Wade is the best player in the league. Now, if you ask Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wade will tell you that the 2009 MVP should have been his, right? It seemed wasn't good enough. He didn't even come up in the discussion. But if you ask him, the 2009 MVP should have been his. But, like, Scotty couldn't do any of that stuff that you talk about. You need Dwayne Wade. But that's the thing about, again, that's the thing about Scotty Pippen. Let me ask you this. When they put Scotty Pippen on the um, 50 greatest players of all time list in 1996, did you think he should have been there? At the time, yes, just because of what the Bulls were doing. And he was, you know, what, at that time, what, four four championships? Because mm. it was, what, the 96? Three, so the three. 96 season, yeah. So it was the 96 season. So, yeah, at that time, like, for me, at looking at that list, he was the guy who – I didn't raise as many questions then. It was probably Shaq because Shaq was only in the league, what, four or five years. But it was but we were already we, there. We knew it. Like, we yeah. knew it, but it was only four yeah, years Like, in. that was the one that was shaky where you feel like maybe it was too fast. With Scotty, I feel like they should have had him and Bill Walton out there at half court and been like, so which one of y'all is 49 and which one of y'all is 50? Because that's what y'all are out here, 49 and 50. Bill Walton at his best, of course, could have been it, but then unhealthy. But, like, Scotty Pippen? I thought, like, and I, I admit, I go back and forth on this. I can't come up with it because so much of it is Scotty is, like, ultimate glue guy, winner guy. Like, you know what he is? He's a Hall of Fame caliber piece. And I don't mean that as an insult to Scotty Pippen to say that he's a piece, but he was a great talent. But you were never going to build your offense around Scotty Pippen. You were never going to say, all right, we got Scotty Pippen. Now we work the rest of this out. Like, you were never going to be there. But – as far as a player who you didn't say that about, how many of them were better than Scottie Pippen, right? Where Scottie could be your playmaker. Scottie could be your top perimeter defender. Steals, everything else. But, you know, a piece. Great for the triangle. Hey, the triangle. Hey, 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 great for the triangle. He's a very, very good player, right? A very, very good player. But wait, you go find. Everybody's either Scotty, one of the five, one of the, uh, somebody tried to hit me with this one. Somebody tried to tell me that Scottie Pippen was the best small forward of all time, like Larry Bird was never born. Like LeBron was never born, like Kevin Durant, like Elgin Baylor, like Rick Barry, like all these guys. We can't get to any just basic, this makes sense about Scottie Pippen. Why? Because he played with Jordan. That means that half the people want to elevate him farther than they should because he's getting the runoff from Jordan. And then the other half want to knock him down because knocking him down means what? Propping up Michael Jordan. You guys give us, you give us a call about Scottie Pippen. That should be our poll question. Is Scottie Pippen overrated? Yeah, we just say is he over? Is he over? Is he overrated? Just let just put it like that. Is Scotty Pippen or was Scotty Pippen overrated? Check that on the at ESPN Radio Twitter account. Straight Talk Wireless nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE network. All right, eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. That's our telephone number. Coming up next, we're gonna talk to Bruce Bowen and tell him why he was compared to Magic Johnson. ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel eighty. Handcrafted, it's all the rage. From flour press soap to homemade hot sauce to artisanal pickles, whatever those are. Well, Firestone Complete Auto Care is glad it's catching on because they've been handcrafting repairs since 1926. And their 4,000 ASE certified technicians work hard every day to keep cars running like new. Before people were making organic greeting cards and rock jewelry in their basements, Firestone Complete Auto Care has been hard at work in the garage tightening, torquing, wrenching. 
and they back that work with their fix right promise, guaranteeing your car is fixed right, your repair is priced right, and the work is completed right on time. Keep your car running newer, longer. When the road gets rough, you need a set of tires that can get tough. Right now at Firestone Complete Auto Care, it's $60 by mail on the Visa prepaid card when you buy a set of four eligible Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Offer valid now through June 9th. Prepaid card is issued by the Bancorp Group pursuant to a license from Visa USA, Inc. and may be used everywhere Visa debit cards are accepted. The Bancorp Bank member FDIC expiration applies. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. All guests join us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Just like our next guest, the numbers in the Raptors is San Antonio. The number 12, his name is Bruce Bowen. Now, Bruce, the number 12, has been on the court running around on the Marcus Aldridge's back. Have you taken it back from him yet? No, I I have not taken it back yet. Look at you. You just get right into it. There is no appetizer. (laughs) There is no holding hands. You just damn. I mean, come on, bro. can can I can I get some scrimp? Can I get a calamari? Something? Would you like some water, Bruce? How about this? How about this? How about this? Would you like some water? Here, here's the water that we'll start with for the Spurs. Right? Does this season still count as a good one, given how it ended? You know, it, it is. This is. I'm always looking at the cup as as half full, and. I believe that there is no such thing as you not being able to learn from certain situations. And this is definitely a case where LaMarcus Aldridge should just stay in the gym all summer. Stay in the gym and work on his game because they needed him this year as far as the playoffs are concerned. They needed him when Kawhi went out. And and I'm not saying that he's not capable of doing that. But he didn't show up when the team really needed him. So the only thing that you can do now, as far as I'm concerned, is work to be better and have a tremendous season next year. That's truly how I look at things. And I know there's a lot of people that will say, well, he needs to get out of there. They need to trade him. Who knows? You can't control that. But what you can control is your effort and as hard how how much time you put into the craft. So if it's me, if I'm wearing that twelve again and 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 I shot three air balls late in the game that could have put us up or something, I'm locking myself in the gym, Bomani, because I don't ever want to have that feeling again. Hey man, see that that I, I get where you're coming from on that. My question about it is though, were the problems for him things that you can work on in a gym? Because it seemed like he was just letting people muscle him. Like it's almost about who you are as much as what you do. Yeah, I, I, and again, this is a situation where you got to you really have to look at things for what they truly are. You go back to last season after he had tremendous first two games in the playoffs against OKC. Next thing you know, they got physical with him. So that's the mantra right now is that in order to affect LaMarcus Aldridge, be physical with him. Now, if it's me, okay, I got to get in the weight room and I got to get with my coaches and say, hey, how do you think I can best help our team? And they will break down the field and say, hey, look at this move right here. I felt like he was so indecisive at times when he got the ball as if he was looking for the double team instead of reacting to when the double team comes. You have to play the game. You can't outsmart teams and, and try to get steps and try to be ahead of them. you got to do things once it's available. If that means that I need to make some more drop steps down to that left-hand layup line area, then that's what I have to do. But for me, I, again, I'm looking at the film. I'm looking at exactly what it was where I was ineffective, and I'm working to be better the next season. All right, we're talking to Bruce Bowen on the right time. And I will switch gears, go to the east. Uh, LeBron was bad in game three. There's no way around it. He scored 34 points in game four. But did he still seem like he was not all the way there to you in game four? He just seemed like the team wasn't clicking. And it, it, there, were, there were issues as far as, I mean, look at him. When have we ever seen LeBron James get 3,000 in the first half, let alone 4,000 in the first half? So it's, it's like it's those types of things I think sometimes – uh, a player can get into a groove of, as well as they've been playing, trying to make the home run play and get it all back at one time. You know what? You can't, you can't receive, you can't retrieve that loss that took place against Boston in game three. So it's better about going about your business. Don't skip steps. 
understand that you let one get away, but now you have to go back to the basics of what you do. And, and it's not far from what you guys are doing. It's just a matter of you not trying to make up for lost time, so to speak, because you guys lost that game at home. All right, we're talking to Bruce Bowen on the right time. Now, I have to ask you this. After watching the Celtics play in games three and four, you like Jarevko, don't you? He strikes me as your kind of player. I, I wonder I, – now, I, I'm going to ask a silly question to you. Why do you think I like Jarevko there, Bomani? I think you like Jarevko because it became clear the Celtics are going to need to kind of muck it up a little bit and get tough with him. And in game three, he was the guy who did just that. He kind of set the tone, Bruce. Oh, he said, now who did he set the tone with, Bomani? <laughs> Why you got to do Williams? this? So, so, I mean, really? I mean, it ain't like he went up to LeBron and said, I'm getting ready to stop you. It was, you know what, this, I, I love this because everyone was talking about, oh, my goodness, look at how Boston's playing right now. They have nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose. So you play a little more careless, or I should say carefree. So now – you're not worried about some of those jump shots now that you were tight with before because you understand that, man, this team is so much better than us. We can still learn from that, but, I mean, in all reality, the, the series is over with. But to see Jarevko, who hasn't played much, have an opportunity to do some things, that's great. But you know what? In crunch time, those individuals that like to, as you say, muck it up, you better back it up with all that mucking. I just don't understand why you were so defensive about it, man. I just know the kind of things you find important in basketball and thought that he embodied some of them. My, my bad, you Bruce. Well, oh my, you know what? I, I saw my therapist today, and my therapist <laughs> said I would be tried. I would be tried. I have to continue to rise above all the things that, that happened to come my way. Last week, it was Zaza. I even had somebody I was going to interview with want to bring up the Zaza thing yesterday. I said, man, I said, Golden State, they're in the NBA Finals. Why are you talking about Zaza right now? And I said, Bomani calls you, didn't <laughs> That was a Bomani move. I said, oh, my goodness. I told my therapist, Bomani is calling other radio stations and giving them pointers how to touch me. I don't understand this. I need, I need to exhale. I ain't even mean to do that to you. Right fast, though, before we let you go, you got to hear this. You're my man, Max Bonstetter. You t helped him with his tie at the lottery. Listen to this right here on who he compared you to. Okay. Now, did you get a chance to talk to Magic Johnson? That's the question. I actually did. I, I wasn't supposed to, but I ran up, and I was like, Magic, Magic, I got to talk to you. So uh, he's another legend, just like Mr. Bowen. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Now, Bomani, will you show me a little respect? <laughs> See, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying. Because I, I'm just saying, when I saw you in New Orleans, you looked at me like like you had issues with me. <laughs> but here's the thing, Bruce. Of course I'm showing you respect. I'm trying to get your number back from LaMarcus Aldridge out of respect for you. That, well, you know what, Bomani, I, I'm going to go ahead and I take back all the negative thoughts and things that I was thinking before you played that little deal and you said I was a legend. There I'm it like, is. You know what? I'm coming to Miami soon. We got to hang out, and, and I expect you to pay for everything that we do because I am a legend. Oh, yeah, yeah, legends make more money than I do. Bruce Bowen, check him out. Cover the NBA on ESPN. Thanks so much, my man. I appreciate it. Take care, brother. All right, man, I love Bruce. Hope we can interview him forever. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. They can save hundreds on your car, business, and recreational vehicle insurance from a local independent agent. Go to Progressive.com today. Now that's Progressive. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. All guests join us on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. Thanks to Bruce Bowen for joining us last segment. Amina Al Hassan of ESPN will join us in the 5 o'clock Eastern hour. And remember, if you miss anything live, check out the Right Time podcast available on the ESPN app. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. Now, look, earlier in the show, I mentioned something to people, and I'm like, look, man, Scottie Pippen is mad polarizing. You start talking about Scottie Pippen as a player, people jump on the phone to argue with you about it. And what do you know? All these people jumped on the phone to argue about Scottie Pippen. 888-729-3776. Talk to Deshaun in Bakersfield. Deshaun, thanks for calling the right time. 
Bo, I think you're right. I think he's a Hall of Fame, almost a Hall of Fame role player, except for the 94 season when he got to prove he could play by himself. But it really was the only year he really just outshined somebody. I figured he was good on defense because if Jordan is whopping you every day, it shouldn't be that hard to guard everybody else in the league. That was my personal opinion on it, right? Joe, Do- Joe Dumars kind of was a little bit about that same kind of way where, you know, he guarding Isaiah every day. It makes him easier to guard everybody else. I mean, I don't remember Scotty ever getting defensive player of the year. I know he was on first team defensive all the time. He lived there, but so did Mike. So it's like, okay, how do you really measure him outside of, you know what? Probably one of the greatest role players of all time. I- I'm oh, with you with that. Hold on, tell me this. How Cali are you for talking about him getting whopped on? <laughs> that's, oh, yeah, that's Cali. That's Cali. What you thought? That's the highlight. With, with, a, with a, my guy by the end of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like, that might be the highlight of my show, Chin, and we're getting whopped on all the time. But, hey, man, I appreciate the call, man. We'll talk to you soon. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. The only thing, though, that 94 year everybody talks about, Scotty averaged 22 points a game, which is not bad. But let's not pretend he was out here averaging 30. The other thing, do you know what their record was when Michael Jordan came back in 95? I think it was 37 and 34. Nobody ever bring that season up. And I would argue Scotty suffered the greatest indignity of his career in that 1994 season, which was at once showing up at the All-Star game, A, in those red shoes, and B, looking like somebody grabbed him by the top of the head and scrunched up the top of it, and he had all them, them rolls on the top. You remember that? Where Scotty decided to cut the box, and then we learned why he had the box in the first place. And I'm like, Scotty, you knew. You knew you had them rolls in your head. You were aware. Have you, and think about it. For, from then on, Scotty been out here, nothing low ever since. Scotty got the little baby fro right now, right now. And you know what? I'm jealous as hell because I couldn't grow that if I tried. Like, that was all well and good for Scotty. He was the MVP of that All-Star game. But that's not the most memorable thing that happened to him that season, though. Oh, are you referring? Well, well which thing? Are you, I mean, here, here are things that happened in the 94 season. One, Yam on Patrick Ewing in the playoffs. That was 94, right? Jordan wasn't on that team. I believe it was 94. I believe it was 94. B, um, the play he didn't go in for. Bingo. That's the one. Bingo. And I get this to Scotty. Scotty's shaking that off. Like It took a while, but the one he didn't go in, and Kukoc went in, and Kukoc, by the way, made that shot. Oh, by the way, that is your, he's the number one when Jordan's not around, Scotty Pippen having plays called in the last minute for somebody else because that was the best move. Like people talk, Everybody talks about that 94 Bulls team on the they didn't have Jordan while never putting in any context of what they did have. Horace Grant, Tony Kukoc. I mean, like, that's not a bad top three guys to have on your team. And I believe Grant was an all-star that season as well. Yeah, 15 and 11 or something like that. You understand what I mean, though? Like, it's never about this Bulls team didn't have anybody. It's only, well, they didn't have Jordan. rest of the damn league didn't have Jordan. But the Bulls team did have, though, Pete Myers. They did have Pete Myers, who became an NBA head coach. 888-729-3776. Talk to Teresa in New Hampshire. Teresa, thanks for calling the right time. <laughs> Hey, Romani. Um, so, so first of all, I want to apologize for the background noise. I'm conducting a softball game. But um, <laughs> I want to say that I, I kind of agree with you, but I have to kind of stick to being a, a product of a 90s baby and go with Scotty um, over D-Wade. And, and the only reason I say that is just because I think that that era of basketball was just – it was a different era than we see today's ball. You know what I'm saying? And I think when you think about him ranking high in his defensive play for – such a consistent amount of time throughout his career, and we're talking about the 90s, I just think that that was an era that is is just insurmountable to to kind of what the guys do today. Even like LeBron James, I mean, we talk about him being a flopper. Um, you know, we talk about the defensive integrity of the NBA uh, in today's game because it's transition, and it's a Golden State kind of world. Um, you know, if you can't get up and down the floor as five, you know, you might as well see your way out. Good. Well, well, Teresa, one thing is we're coming up on the break, and I appreciate the call. The one thing, though, you can put your hands on people in the 90s in defense. Also, every black person in New Hampshire listens to the right time. Hey, uh, coming up next, Kyrie Irving. We saw playoff Kyrie. We'll talk about that on ESPN Radio. Thanks for listening to the Right Time Podcast. Please come back tomorrow for more. And don't forget to listen to the Right Time with Bomani Jones from 4 p.m. to 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.